Hello everyone, and welcome back to another wire wrap video tutorial. My name is Jim McIntosh, and this week's tutorial is really kind of neat. Uh, it's a two stone pendant, and it's really kind of exciting, the pendant. Uh, it, it looks very complicated, but if you take your time and you just work with it, you'll get the technique down. It's very easy to do once you really put your mind to it, and I know you can do it. But before we get over to the tutorial, I do want to kind of let you know of some things that are happening over on our website. This will only take a second, so bear with me. Uh, we've got a new area on our website. Uh, it's an area that's just open to members, and the membership for it is free. In fact, the membership for it will always be free. The area has interesting and unique things that I'm going to be doing that I'm not housing here on my YouTube channel. We're going to be doing in the club area, we'll be doing things like uh, coming up with ways to add color to our work other than using different cabochons. Uh, we'll be kind of pushing the envelope on design and what we can do with wire wrap to make it interesting and making it your own. We'll talk about design, we'll talk about techniques, we'll talk about selling your work. Uh, there's also another area to it that's for members only, that is the wire ma Wrap Makers Wire Wrap School. I almost said the wrong thing. The Wrap Makers Wire Wrap School. And this is a beginning to end course that takes you from the easy stuff to the complicated stuff. And we're going to be refining that even more so as we go. So it's a good basic course on wire wrapping. So if you want to hone your skills, stop by and check out the course. There's even a couple of tutorials in that school that are designs that I haven't shown everybody yet. So go over there and take a look. We're also selling tools and we're selling wire and we're selling uh, cabochons. Got a great selection of cabochons. So head over there, check it out. The link is right here. But you can also find it in the description below. Okay, that's out of the way. Let's go over to the bench. I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to be making, okay? Let's go. One. So I wanted to show you what it is that we're making. I've got two stones on this particular piece. I really like to make these multi-level kind of things. This is a piece of Rosarita, this red. And then I've used a piece of Fordite. Favorite stone. I've got a few favorites. This is one of them. It's a great Fordite beautiful little lines in it and a nice polished up piece. This is not a full cord but I did want to kind of show you how everything goes together and that's why I put this little short piece of cord in here and all it is is just a simple rolled uh, bale that's on here. Uh, we've wrapped these two together I notice here's the back of it. You can always tell a lot from a piece by looking at the back and I, you see how the setting is made on here. And I've also got one set of a prong. I've got one of these uh, prong wires that I've curved in front holding everything into place. So really, really nice piece. You're going to really enjoy making one of these. So here's just an overview of our tools. Of course, we're going to use our wrap maker pliers. If you don't have a set of these yet, you can uh, follow the link down in the description. We're going to use something to cut the wire with. So we've got some wire cutters. I'm going to use some round nose pliers. These are what we'll use to make the bale. And so these work great. We're also going to be hardening the metal. And my, the method that I'm going to be using to harden this is my uh, rawhide mallet and my bench block. Uh, those are going to be great to really hammer this down. And of course, to make all of our marks on our wires, we're going to be using uh, a nice Sharpie. And this is a fine tip permanent marker. We'll also be using my rotary tool and installed into my rotary tool, I have this, uh, I haven't put it in yet, but this is my uh, silicone rubber uh, polishing tip and you can also get there's a resource or a, uh, uh, in the description you'll find where you can get this a good resource to get this as well okay and the materials very simple to use we're just going to be using uh, 18 gauge square wire 18 gauge round wire and we're going to be using two small to medium sized stones of your choice. Uh, you can see on this particular one, this is the one we're actually going to be making. I used this small piece of Rosarita and this small piece of Fordite. 
So I've I've already cut my wire. I'm using I'm using 18 gauge sterling silver square wire for uh, for the outside wires, and you can use whatever kind of wire that you'd like. Um, you can use even bigger wire, uh, but many of you may want to use some copper wire. That's fine. And what I've done is I've cut three pieces for each of the stones. So I'm, like I said, I showed you earlier, I'm, I made this out of two stones. We're going to be doing this kind of together. Um, so I'm not really going to show you how to do both of these, uh, but what I am going to do is when I get done making the second one, which will be the top stone, uh, when I'm fitting them together, I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to concentrate first on this bottom stone right here. So I've cut three wires. I've cut a long wire that's eight inches long, and I've straightened it. So I've just kind of went over it with my fingertips now. Many of you may want to use a cloth. Here's an, an old cleaning cloth that I use. You can use that just to save your fingertips. It's up to you. Um, but we're just going to cut three wires and we're going to now uh, mark all of the centers of these. So let's start with the long wire. Now, I said this was eight inches long, so I'm going to take my short ruler here and I'm going to find the middle, which would be four inches. And I'm going to mark that center with my fine tip permanent marker. So there's the center of this one. I'm going to put a mark there. And then these other two are three inches long each, so I'm going to take them and I'm going to line up, line them up with the zero, so they're nice put together here. And what I want to do is I want to mark the center at an inch and a half. Okay, so we've got our centers. They're all marked. And now to kind of put this bundle together, real simple, we're going to take one of the short wires, the three inch wires that are going to be the prong wires, and we're going to line that center mark up with the center mark on the long wire. So here's my eight inch wire. And then on the other side of that long wire, I'm going to take the other three inch and I am going to center it also here on there. So I've got all three wires now centered. I'm going to take a piece of painter's tape, so make sure you cut some of these. I'm going to put it here toward the end of the short wires, and I'm going to bring it around, tape it to itself, so that it makes a nice little flag. See? A little flag. And we're going to start from that flag. We're going to work our way to the other end of those short wires, just making sure, and the reason why we do this is I want to kind of bring my fingers to down the length of this to make sure that everything doesn't nothing crosses over so they're all flat nothing gets crossed over one another I'm going to put another piece of tape bring it around the back side and make another little flag so that will hold this together trust me this paint painters tape this is a lifesaver uh, because it gets so difficult uh, with all of your wires being everywhere if you try to just start a wrap with just loose wires, you're going to end up getting a headache. So uh, so I always use painter's tape to hold my bundles together, and it's a good practice for you to get into. Now, here's our bottom stone. We're going to actually be making this so that it fits behind this wide part right here, uh, just like this. So in order to figure out how wide to make this uh, wrap area, we need to find out what the width of this stone is. Now the width of this particular stone, this is a piece of Fordite that I'm using, it is, I'm going to put it here on my scale, I've got my millimeter scale side, and I'm going to say that it is, it is about 17 millimeters, so half of that would be eight and a half. So we're going to actually make this be about eight millimeters wide, this wrap area. The reason why I do this, I always kind of take half the width or the half the length. Normally we would do the length of the stone, uh, but since we're going to be putting it sideways like this, I always make a wrap area that is half the length or half the width, depending on which way I am wrapping. 
So since this is about a 17, I'm going to do, I'm just going to do an, a, a, uh, an eight millimeter wide wrap area. So I'm going to take this center mark that we've got across all of them and I'm going to line it up with the four millimeters on my, my scale here and I'm going to mark the zero and then I'm going to come out here to eight and I'm going to make a mark. This will be our wrap area and for this type of jewelry making uh, we're going to be doing what is called a cut and wrap technique. I'm going to show you that right now. So we've got we've got this measured out how we want it. I'm going to take this is my sanding block that I use. I use this quite often uh, just to give my uh, just get me up off my work table. And I'm going to take my flat hand file, and I have a flat hand file that has a cutting surface on all four sides. Uh, actually, before I do that, let me do one other thing too. So I, I like to take a piece of tape and I like to put it outside of the wrap area. So let me let me do that. So I've got this one right outside, and I'll do the same thing with the second one. I do this because it helps keep uh, give put some pressure on the the area that I'll be that I'll be um, filing away. It, it holds some pressure there, so that it makes it much easier. To, to cut this, and you, you'll understand that in just a minute. So I'm going to take this narrow side of my hand file, and I'm going to file that area between the two outside marks that I made, this cut and wrap area. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want to hold, I want it to have just a little bit of a dip in the wire where the wrap wire will sit. So as I'm wrapping this center part, uh, it will kind of put a shoulder on either side of that area so that that wrap does not slide. And because what happens is if you don't put it there, it causes the wires to kind of move back and forth like this if you don't get a tight enough wrap on it. And uh, that can cause some problems. So I always make this little cut and wrap section here. So I'm just going to kind of cut across this area and I want to take probably about a half a millimeter off. You don't want to go too deep but all we're doing is we're just cutting across there to uh, give just a little bit of a dip and I also like to take this squared off area, this uh, corner and I like to kind of go where I, the mark is, and I like to kind of give it a shoulder. So I kind of go across this a couple of times with that, that corner, just to make a definite line. I do it on both sides, so I'm going to do the second side. And I'm just kind of putting a little shoulder there, a little, a little squared off shoulder. And then once you get that, I always go turn it around just to make sure that I've got area. Okay, so that's all we're going to take off. We didn't take off. See, there's a little bit of metal left here but on the, uh, the sanding block, but uh, you can't really tell. You'd have to look at it really close with some magnifiers on to notice the area that we cut. Okay, so that's what we've got. So now I'm going to take about a, I'll take about a six inch piece of half round um, 18 gauge wire. So I've got about a six inch piece here. I'm going to grab my wrap maker pliers and I'm going to wrap this cut area. So I'm going to hold my wrap maker pliers where I started the cut area. And that's where I want to start my wrap. So the long side of these pliers hold the, the uh, wire bundle. And then this narrow side, you'll notice there's a little opening here between the jaws. And I just put the wire into that little opening, that gap, till it bottoms out. And that'll hold it in, and then I just make my wraps. So I'm going to wrap this whole area that I cut. So I should only take about five, maybe six wraps. And I want one thing about these pliers is they allow you to make a good tight wrap without the wires pulling in and bunching. That's what I like about these. So if you don't have a pair of these, you might want to stop by and get you a set from my website. All the information is in the description below. So I've got my wrapped area. I'm going to now 
squeeze the wrap so that it sets it in place. So this is going to be nice and firm up against the uh, wire bundle. And then I'm going to now uh, just cut off my excess. I always trim these about half the width of my um, wire bundle so that it uh, so it's kind of hidden because this is going to be up against the stone uh, and it'll hide the, the cuts so that nobody gets cut first of all uh, but it also will uh, make the piece look so much better even from the back so I've got that now here's an optional thing that you can do and, and, and I, I'm going to tell you I do it all the time is I take the cut area this is my bench block and I have it on a cloth just to kind of dampen some of the sound a bit um, but I always put the cut side down the side that I the of the wrap that I cut and I take a rawhide mallet and I give the wrap a few taps just to kind of make sure that I've got a nice firm wrap um, because that's going to be kind of hold everything where you want it. So now that you've got that wrap area done, you can now remove your tape. Just pull those little flags off. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to now set up the whole uh, the way the bundle is going to sit on the stone. So remember, we are going to make this horizontal. If you've looked at any of my other videos, we normally do this um, vertically. And then we bring these out and that comes around the stone. But since we're making a different piece with a different type of bale on it, we're doing this particular one horizontally. And that's going to change how the wire is on the stone. Okay? So flip your bundle over and take a piece of painter's tape and just put it over the wrap area. And then set it down here on your work surface. So this is the cut side is up. And what I want to do is I want to kind of center this wrap on my stone where I want everything to be. Now I want this thick side of the this thick area of my stone so I want to put it right about here and then I'm going to stick the tape to the stone this will hold everything in place so that we can make some minor adjustments so I've got it flipped over now I'm looking at the back I want to make sure that this is centered on this fat area of my stone, this wide area. It looks like I've got it, uh, it looks like it's it's good this way, but let's figure out if I've got it this way. I can feel the, uh, I can see the wrap is right there, yeah, and it's not quite centered, so I'm going to kind of bring it, or bring it, bring it to the center here, and that looks that looks pretty close. Maybe just a touch more over. There we go. Okay, so that's where I want it. So now what I can do is I can take these prong wires and I can bring them out where I'm going to have them sitting. So I kind of like to bring my wires out towards the top of the stone, making sure they're even on both sides. They're not, so I'm going to bump that guy up just a little bit. That looks good. And then these bottom prongs, I'm going to bring out to right about here, because I want it to hold that thick part of the stone evenly. So this is what the prongs are going to look like. So now that I've got my prongs where I want them, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to take my fine tip permanent marker and I want to mark each of these prongs where the wire comes out from the stone. So just the prong wires, these short wires. And all I'm doing is I'm making a mark where it exits from the stone. And here's the last one. 
Okay, so all four of my prongs are measured and they're marked. And I can now take the tape off and release the stone temporarily. And we don't need this tape any longer. So we can discard our tape. So now you'll notice that these prong wires each have a mark on them. And that mark is going to help us make a bend to be able to begin making the, uh, the prongs for this. So let's do that. So to make these prongs, or to bend the prongs, you need to position your pliers either, I'm going to, since, since this is such a short area, I'm actually going to put the pliers, these are my wrap maker pliers and they work great for flat nose pliers, I'm going to put it just outside of the mark that we made and I'm going to then make a bend just like that. So I bent it toward me to make it, and, and I am going away from, the, this is my cut area, you can see where I've made all of the uh, various uh, marks on here, so we're going to hide those marks. So I again want to put this just outside the, the area, and what I mean by that is there's the mark going towards the outside of the, the uh, prong, and I'm just going to make a nice bend in it. And we'll do the same thing over here. I'm just outside the mark. Make a prong there. And then the final one, same thing. Just outside and make a bend. Okay, so now we can kind of straighten some of these up. They're all kind of all over the place. but So this is what you get. Let me show you from the side view here what we've got. So here's the side view of it. See, so here's the long wire that I'm holding on to, and here's the prongs for this. So now I should be able to take the stone, and the stone should fit securely within the piece, just like this. And if you take a look at the side view here, we want to make sure that these are sitting against that bend right here. And if they're not, you may need to pull this away or take the, you know, pull the stone back out, should I say, and just make an adjustment. And I'm just checking each of them and they all look like they're seated in there really well. So now what we do is we're going to take each of these prongs and we're going to bend it over the stone so that it sits safely and securely in the setting. There's one, and then there's one. There's our final one. Okay, so I've got them all kind of in a TP formation here. And they should hold the stone in. So I got the stone flipped upside down. Should hold it in pretty good. So you can take now, take wire cutters, and we're going to trim these down. Now, I'm not trimming these to their final length yet. I'm just making some room for me to work. So I'm cutting these kind of long so that I have some space to take a look at everything to see how it's going to fit over the stone. And this is sterling silver, so remember with precious metal like sterling and gold and gold filled and sterling filled, uh, hold on to your scraps, you can turn those in. There are some places that will recycle that and give you a nice credit for it. Okay. So I've set those aside. So now what I want to do is I want to trim down these. And I like to trim them. So I've got these kind of going over the stone a bit already. And what I want to do is I just want to cut it long enough to where it will sit on top of the stone. See, so I've got this so that it goes just so it's going onto the stone. And now I want to cut this other one the same length or or thereabouts, pretty close, and it's better to cut too long than too short. So this one, these look good, and we're going to cut this one, same thing. I'm going to kind of compare it to the previous one. Give it a little trim, good, and then the final one. Trim that guy. Okay, so our prongs look pretty good. 
So what we want to do now is we want to open this up. So take two of your prongs and just kind of open them, pull them away so you can remove the stone. We want to take the stone out because we'll, I'm going to have to do all four here. This one's holding on to it really good. So what we want to do now is we want to shape these prongs. And I like to, to give them a nice curve, each of the prongs. I like to have them kind of curve inward. And you can do this with a flat needle file, this, you know, also known as a jeweler's file. Uh, I'm going to use something different. I'm going to actually use my flex shaft. And in my flex shaft, I have one of these uh, rubber, uh, silicone rubber polishing discs. And there's, a, uh, there's something down in the, uh, the description below that shows you where you can pick some of these up at. These are great because they not only polish, but they also cut the metal. And this is going to give us a nice curved effect on these prongs, okay? So let's do that now. And all I'm going to do is just... take this tip down a bit. Okay, so we've got all four of these prongs cut, and I've got them nice and smooth, and I just want to check to make sure you don't want these tips to kind of cut into you. That's why I kind of like looking at, looking at it in, at various angles, putting my finger here, just to make sure I've got a nice smooth area, and I do. So you should be able to now put your stone back in, and you should be able to set those. And we're not going to set them yet because we want to do some other work to this before we do any setting. So I've got this in here, and we can maneuver these around to where we're going to finally set them. But what I want to do now is I want to kind of understand where I want to make these bends in this uh, bale wire. That's what this actually is, is this is going to make the bale of the piece. So I want to kind of look and see just how wide I want to make this. And I want to kind of make it, let me get to the inches side. So I'm going to center this. I'm going to want to make it about an inch wide from the center. So I'm going to line the center of my um, wrap. This is the center wrap that we started with. So here would be the center. I've lined that up with a half inch. And I am going to make a mark here at one inch, and then I'm going to make a mark down here at zero. I'm going to put the stone back in because I want to kind of see if I have got it right. Now you'd want to make sure that you've got your stone set in here in the right place. And it looks like, I'm going to use the millimeter side now, so we're here at four. Yeah, okay, that's good. So. You, you want to make sure that you've got this oriented correctly because your stone, these prongs are going to be at different places on the, your um, on your stone. See, so notice that this top one, these are wider than these bottom ones. And that's because my stone tapers down. You may have a, an oval stone or a round stone, something or square even. Uh, but, uh, so you want to make sure you've got it facing the correct way. Now, 
I like to put a, a little curve downward in the piece before I do any bending to the top of it. So I've just taken this down just that way a little bit and I just want to put another bend here. And I want a nice gentle curve just like that because it's going to give some character to the piece. Okay, let's uh, finish this just a little bit. I want to make sure it's kind of even. Okay, very good. And then, now we're going to bend these toward the top. So this would be the top. I mean, I've got my bend going downward. We're going to now bend it the opposite direction. And I want to take, I'm going to put my pliers, my rat maker pliers here outside. So there's my mark. Here is the outside of the wire. And I am just going to make a tight, sharp bend upward. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to come just outside of that mark and I'm going to give a nice sharp bend upward. And you want to kind of make sure that you've got them. There we go. That they're even. They're going the right direction. And some of that little bend came out of it. I want to kind of put that back in just to make sure that we're bent downward. So let's take a look and see how it's looking so far. Put our stone back in. Okay, so there. Looks even. Looks even. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is we want to just give this some some bends on the, so they kind of go outward. See, so notice what I'm doing. So all I'm doing is I'm putting pressure with this finger. I'm pushing in. I'm smoothing this out. And again, you can do that with a with a cloth. You can make this bend. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to going to add this little bend and then we're going to straighten out these wires so that they go above the stone so what I've done is I've just made whoops just made a nice little angle above the stone just like this Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we actually can't make our bale yet. The reason being is because we're making two of these. Remember, we've got our nice little piece of rosarita here that we're going to be doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same steps. I'm going to make another setting for the rosarita stone. And then I'm going to actually then fit these two together. So let me show you. So this is going to go here and this one is going to go above it and we're going to make two bales together so that they fit within one of, within each other. Okay. So let me go ahead. I'm not going to go through step by step. I'm going to just duplicate the exact same steps I just did with this one for the Rosarita. Okay, so I've got the setting for this Rosarita done, and I wanted to point something out. Now, I've got all of the prongs cut, and I've got them nice and shaped how I wanted them, but I want you to see something. I left one prong connected, and the reason why is I want to use that to kind of swirl across the top of my stone. I do this when I have stones that are single color like this, or maybe they just lack a little something. And I like to kind of just bring these wires and swirl them across the front of the stone to give a nice contrast. I think this is going to be beautiful with uh, this beautiful red color and the silver I think is going to be fantastic. So I'm going to show you how I do that after I get, when we get to setting the stones, I'll show you how to do that. But the next thing I want to do, and something else I want to point out too is, 
I've got a very narrow stone. This is very th narrow. And I want to put the stone back in right quick. And I want to show you this is difficult to do a prong on this narrow of a piece. This is only about four or five millimeters wide. I think it's four millimeters wide. That was barely the width. It was just a little bit over the width of my hand file. Uh, and so I want you to notice it's it, the, doing something this small can be a problem. It isn't impossible, but it could be challenging. Okay, so so don't don't be afraid of using smaller stones. But about a four millimeter width on my cut is about the smallest I will do. So keep that in mind when choosing stones to work with in this style, uh, because you don't want to get something that's too narrow of a stone that you can't put into a setting. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually do the rest of this. I'm going to be making my bends here in just a minute and I'll show you what I'm uh, done with. When I'm done doing that, I'll come back and show you what we've got. All right. Okay, so one more thing before we kind of move too much further is since we're going to be kind of, this is the bottom piece and this is the Rosarita. So since we're, notice, if I shape this exactly like the first one, they're not going to fit within one another. So that's something we need to keep in mind is where it's going to sit in here. So what I want to do is I want to put the stones in. So here is the bottom stone there. And then here is my Rosarita, the top stone. That's going to go here, and I want to kind of see where I'm going to be putting these. So this is about where I want them. So what I want to do is I want to take my marker, and I want to mark where the two are going to be sitting within one another. I'm going to mark each of the bottom. This is the... So here is... This is the bottom piece, and I just want to, on these arms of it, I want to, I'm going to kind of go off here to the side just to kind of get it level. And you can measure these just to make sure you've got them where you want them here. So this is about uh, 30 millimeters. Yeah, they're about the same. So, and what you want to do is you want to take that a measurement here. Actually, let me double check this one. It looks a little lower. 30, and they're about right, they're about even, okay. So what I want to do is I want to take a measurement here between them, and those two marks, so I get the diameter, or the width of this, so that's about 12, 15, about 17 millimeters. Now I want to kind of do the same thing over here. These bends... I want to kind of make so that there's 17 millimeters in between here. So these are going to have to change. See, so I made that mistake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this. Do not undo these too many times. Uh, it weakens that bend. Since you got a bend there, it weakens that. So half a 17 is eight and a half. So I want to take my, my ruler here. I want to go here. I want to center it on eight and a half. So right about there. And I want to take my fine tip permanent marker and I want to mark 17. So here's 20, 19, 18. So here's 17. So that's going to be a bend right here as soon as I get this to make a mark and then we'll bend over here at zero and now when I bend this it should all fit into place. We may need to make some minor adjustments but uh, let's let's kind of see what we come up with so we're going to take and put this on the outside and I'm going to make a bend now I need to kind of fix 
the previous bend, I want to kind of take it out. So all I do is I just kind of work the wire just a little bit. That's a great thing about this dead soft wire. I can't can't say it enough to work with dead soft wire. It is so forgiving, at least to a point. It's very forgiving. And so I'll, and let me show you how you take these little bumps out. Is you just you just put it between the jaws here where the bend is, and you just kind of give it a squeeze, and that'll flatten that out. See, and then I can just continue to work that in. So now I should be able to take the two sides and reasonably be able to fit one inside of the other, and that's what you end up with right there. See, so that does work. So really good to see that. And let's double check to make sure. Where'd my Rosarita go? Here it is. Let's just double check and make sure. So I'm going to put the stone in. There. And see if I got it at about the right height. Eh, I'm a little off there. There we go. So this one fits within the other one pretty well. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to take the stones out. Before we set them, we're going to set, take the stones out of the settings. And we're now going to do some work with these arms. These long arms we have here. We want to make them a little firmer and a little harder to bend. And since we are working with dead soft wire, we're going to take a bench block, got it on something to dampen all of the sound, and I'm going to tap the bend, now that I've got it finalized, and I'm also going to go down the length of each of those arms, and I'm tapping them. And what I'm doing is I'm making these work hardened, or maybe just slightly harder than that. Inside metal, you've got the molecules, and in between the molecules, there's a bit of space. When you uh, hit them, or you... you tap on them with a hammer or a mallet, those molecules start to get tighter. They kind of work themselves into one another. And that's what firms up your wire. That's what makes it harder. Um, and we want that because we want this to be a nice solid piece so that, uh, so that it lasts a long, long time. So just work those each of those arms by just tapping them. And you can kind of feel the, the wire getting stiffer. And do the same thing over here. And notice I have it face down just to make sure that, because I've got the setting, here's my, my prongs, I've got them down here on the side of the bench block, and I'm only hitting the wire that I want to, to work hard in. going all the way to the ends. Now down here towards this about this last inch or so, I really want to kind of make those firm. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side too, because those are going to be where the bale is. I'm going to make a bend there. Okay, so that's the bottom stone. Here is the top stone. This one might be just a little more challenging uh, because we do have this uh, this prong sticking out here. So I'm going to take my bench block, I'm going to set it on its side, and I will work it that way. See, so I've just got the area that I want to, to work hard in. Okay, so I've got these both done. I'm going to set my bench block aside. So now, finally, 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 we can do some setting. So let's start setting the larger stone first. We're going to set the stone. Once we get the stone set, we're then going to bend the bale portion of this. And this is going to be a little bit different because we want these to be able to nest within one side one another. So what I want to do is I want to put my stone in. 
this is my bottom one. And I'm going to set this. Grab my pliers here. And we work in opposites. So I'm going to do this one, then the bottom. I'm going to do the top right, bottom left, top left, bottom right. Doing them in opposites gives equal tension around the stone. It pushes the stone towards the center evenly. Okay, so we're going to take, I'm going to take just the jaws here, that this jaw is going to go at the bottom of the prong, and the other jaw is going to go to the top tip, and it's just going to push it in onto the stone. Be very, very careful. The last thing you want to do is you want to scar up your stone. So now we're going to go to the bottom right, do the same thing. We're going to push that tip in onto the stone, okay, and then the top left, we're going to get it at the bottom and then push it onto the top, and now we're at our bottom left. The same thing, we're going to put our prong here at the bottom of the prong, top of the prong, and push it in. And that should get them all pointed toward the center. And these top ones moved on me. So I want to kind of readjust those. They're fine where they are. They'll hold the stone in just fine. I just want to make sure that everything is even. Okay. okay, so that is set where we want it. Okay, and just kind of make some adjustments to make sure that your stone is in the correct place where you want it. Alright, so that's that one. Now we're going to go with the slightly harder one. And I say it's slightly harder because we're going to want to do a couple of things here this rosarita in. First thing I want to do is I want to kind of take this rosarita, this long prong here, and I want to start to form it, to shape it. And I want it to kind of go, start at the top where the prong would normally be, but then I'm going to kind of give it some bends. So I'm going to put this on my work surface to kind of give it some initial, and I'm going, since it's so small, I'm going to kind of use my my wrap maker pliers here to start my curves and I just want just a subtle a little curve like that and I want to take some of this out and I'm just kind of making a nice design on the front to give this even more of an interesting look and there's a reason why I'm doing this one first and I will show you in just a minute Okay, I'm liking that. I'm liking that. So where to trim this off? We're going to trim this off just beyond this, this bottom curve. So I want to kind of make a change here. I'm going to push this over. And I want this to kind of come through the center here. Okay. So... This is our bend that we've made here in this particular piece. Everything kind of moved on me here. I can recenter everything, but this is that initial thing that I wanted. I want this to be kind of in the center of the stone, coming down the middle of it here. And I'll readjust this in just a minute, but I wanted to be able to take the stone back out because I now, that may, may mean opening some more of these prongs a little bit more. So I'm going to open these prongs on the other side that I didn't open. I'm going to open them up a little bit. Just to be able to get the stone out on that side. All right. It's loosened. There we go. What I want to do is I want to taper this down with my, uh, with my uh, polishing tool here. So let me do that right quick. I want to shape that tip so it doesn't scratch anyone.
Okay, so we've got that, uh, got this nice and tapered here. And that looks really good. Now, before I put the stone in, what I want to do is I want to take and where it bends downward here, right in here, it bends down over the stone. I want to kind of push that a little bit further down just so that it sits up against the stone. And I'm kind of overdoing that so that I can sneak the stone in. Got to kind of sneak it in here. There we go. And I want, see, so now it's smooth up against there. So I, so since I've started with that one, I'm going to go to the bottom, the opposite prong here. Oops, you know what? I have this, shoot, there we go. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to set the prong onto the stone. And we'll come up here to the top. Same thing, one over the stone, and then... We'll do the bottom, the bottom prong. We will push it up against so that you've got everything on here how you want it. And let's just kind of redo some, re just do a little housework as I call it. I kind of, so there's our stone and our Rosarita is set now. It's kind of crooked, so let me do a bend here. That should straighten that Rosarita out. So that's what we ended up with the Rosarita. So now we've got both of them set. What I want to do is I now want to put the two of them in their kind of final area. So I'm going to take both of these and I'm going to set them here inside. Okay, so I've got, I had to make some some slight adjustments just to make sure everything was centered and it was just boring for to you guys. So what I want to do is I want to set the Rosarita inside of the center of this and I want to put it where, kind of where I want this to be at. Now, so I want my Rosarita to be just above it. So I'm right about here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take I'm going to hold them together once I get it where I want it. And I'm going to put a piece of tape there. And I'm going to put it, I want to make sure I leave uh, some of this, the shorter wire, that which would be the bottom one. I want to leave maybe about an inch space. So I'm going to put a piece of tape over both of these. Make a flag here. So that'll hold that into place. And now we'll do the same thing over here. We're going to Make sure before we do anything that we've got everything level and then we will take a piece of tape and we will make another flag here about the same spot on the other arm and now we're going to do some checking and we want what we want is we want these to kind of be right up against each other we want both these arms. So I'm going to take, this is the Rosarita. I'm kind of making sure that it is snug in this. My tape came loose, so let's fix that. There we go. Okay, so this is the nested thing that we want. Now, now, I, now you have to make a decision. I'm sorry that I'm putting you guys in this position to where you have to make a decision, but you have to make a decision. You can wrap these two together, the, the two arms, so that would join the bottom and the top together, and that will hold them firmly in place, and then we can make the bail once we do that, or you can skip wrapping them together. And you can just go ahead and make the bale. So, the advantages and disadvantages of each. The advantage of putting them together would be that it would look like one piece. It would look like one completed nice piece. The advantage of putting them separate and just making the bales is that you could make a whole table of these smaller, narrower ones, wider ones, and then you can let your customers kind of pick and choose and match what you want. Do you see the advantages and disadvantages of them each? 
In this video, I am going to actually join them together. So how much am I going to join them together? Well, I am going to join them. I'm going to see here. So where the bend on the top one comes, I am actually going to wrap about three quarters of an inch. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to set the scale. There's the zero right where it comes out of this bend. So right there. So that's where I'm going to start. And I'm going to go here to three quarters of an inch and I'm going to make a mark. And I'll show you guys, you metric people, uh, this is at about 20 millimeters. 20 millimeters, okay? We'll do the same thing over here. We will mark the arms on this one also. I'm going to set the scale here where it just comes from out from that. So there's the three quarter mark right here. And we're going to measure up down the arm right there. So now I'm going to take some 18 gauge half round wire and I'm going to wrap these two together so that they're one piece. So wrapping this is not hard, but it's also not very easy either. It takes a little bit of thinking. Now, notice I can't really get in here because everything's in the way. So, so to wrap this area, it's going to take a little bit. It's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but I think we can do it. What we're going to do is we're going to start above the stone. And I'm going to put my wrap maker pliers here where I want to start. And I want to kind of get this down in between. So it takes a little doing, but there. So we want to start right about here. And what I want to do is I want to make two wraps. There's one. And get this down here to make the second one. There's two. And what I want to do is I want to kind of move it down just a little bit, not all the way down, but I want to be able to do a third one. And all I'm doing is I'm just kind of doing a couple of them in the same spot, and then I'm going to push it down a little bit till we get it where we want it. And we want it right down here where everything is coming together. See, so this, that's where I want it. And you know what? It looks like I can probably just work my way around it. So I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm just going to continue my wrap. Yeah, see, we're past it now. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap it up to where, until I decide where I want to stop. I may, I may use this one inch mark. I may not. Now that I'm where I kind of where I want to be, I want to take this end since we started on the front of the stone. I want to kind of move it to the back is the first thing I want to do. And then I want to kind of set this wrap in place. And just be patient. You can continue to do this. It's not difficult. All right, I've probably got one or two more wraps to go. There's one, and here is two. I'm gonna stop for just a minute. I'm gonna set these last few that I've done. I wanna measure to see about how long this is. Yeah, it's, see, look at that, right on three quarters of an inch. So that is exactly what I want. So I'm gonna flip it over. And I am going to trim this off just to do all of my other ones. Just trim them about half the width of that frame. Okay. And then we will push these down. I'll show you what we have done on the front. And then I'm just going to do the other side as well. So let me show you. See, so this is what we've got thus far. We'll do some clean house cleaning when we get both of these done. But right now, that's where we are. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually reset some of this because my tape, your tape will come loose as you kind of maneuver things around. And now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do this other side. I'm going to do that off camera. 
So this one, this other side, I was able to kind of do opposite. So I started off on the easy side, now I'm ending up on the hard side. Uh, either way works. What I mean by the hard side is uh, I had to kind of use to kind of get in here, be able to get into here, uh, this tight spot here. And it works well if you've got a short end uh, to get into those little tight, hard to reach places. But I've got this side finished, and both sides done. And I'm just going to finish pushing everything down, making sure I've got everything set. Can take these flags off because what we also want to do now is we want to make the bale where everything is going to sit now something I want to do before we go too much further and that is I've got spots on here where I've used permanent marker uh, to kind of make some marks and show where everything's at and to do that we're going to use our favorite little tool some of this uh, nail polish remover. To use the nail polish remover you just take a little bit of the non-acetone nail polish remover. I put it in the cap. I take a little cotton swab and I get it nice and nice and wet and then I go over the metal with it where those marks are. And those marks come right out with uh, just a little bit on the cotton bud or a cotton swab depending on what part of the world you are in as to what you would call it but you just kind of want to go over those marks and make sure they're all gone I got one up here too I want to make sure I get out because those are all going to show up very good okay so that's whoops nope I got some in here I want to get these out that are right there and it looks like I've got one right here as well. Let's use the other end of the cotton bud here. There we go. So good. So before we move on, I want to make sure that I have everything straight and connected well where I want it. This because things move as you're working. Sometimes they will move on you. There. Everything is kind of going the right direction. Everything seems to be centered. I don't have any spots I need to kind of open up. Good. Very good. So this, we're going to make a bale on here. We're going to use round nose pliers. And what we're going to do basically is we're just going to put the round nose pliers uh, here above the wrap and we're going to bend this over. But I want you to think about something. Sometimes what I like to do is I like to hammer these flat. And, and I don't think I'm going to do it on this particular one, but I am going to make sure that the area that we will be bending is nice and firm. Okay, so I just used my raw hide on there and now I can just put this where I want to start and I do want to kind of start it above that and I'm going to use it at the thickest point on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend these over the tool to make a hook. See, so I've got a hook. And now I want to trim these. And I'm going to trim them long again. So here's the top of the wrap. I want this to kind of come into that wrap. So I am going to kind of trim this long. We're going to end up cutting this again as we finalize the shape. See, I've, I've got this longer than, than that. And then I'm just going to continue to form it. So I'm going to to now use the jaws and continue that curl. Okay, so now it's there. So what we want to do is we want to, I want to elongate this just a little bit. 
So now we're going to take our pliers and we're going to kind of bend these in and finish that curl. Okay, I'm going to straighten it up. Okay, so see now notice I got too much wire here for this. So I'm just going to trim off a little bit. Trim it off a little bit at a time. If you have to trim more, trim more. But yeah, there we go. And you want to just kind of close that loop and then reshape it just a little bit using pliers again because it does tend to close up on you. More now we can. There we go. And that looks like about the right height. Okay, nice. So we've got these at about the right height for the piece. Now I do have, let me just show you, I've got a little, just a, just a short piece of cord. I'm just going to feed that cord through here. I want you to see what we've, what we've finished with. Is this piece here. See, so this will to let, give you an idea as to what it would look like on a cord. So, it was kind of difficult. A couple of, couple of extra hands needed sometimes. But believe me, once you start making this a couple of times, this will become a very easy project for you. And there's a couple of ways that you can do it. I kind of mentioned you can either wrap those two sections together or you can leave them separate. As separate pieces and that's another great way of maybe selling your work uh, you know we had the three-in-one pendant uh, not too far back check out my channel or I'll, you know maybe I'll try and leave a link up here at the top a little card uh, to let you know where it's at uh, but uh, there's multiple ways that you can make this to be able to sell your work. And you can come up with different shapes and lots of different things you can do with this so don't stick to just this one way Come up with your own way of making it as well. Come up with your own designs and, and your own way of doing it. All right? Well, I'm glad you stopped by. Again, my name is Jim McIntosh. And as you're working, always remember, practice, practice, practice.